Well, hello, everybody. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever time zone you're in. Hi, my name is Kurt Munson. I'll be the host of today's webinar. This is called GPS Visualization and Processing Using ENCODE Glyphworks. This is part of our continuing series of engineering applications and the an analysis software world, which is ENCODE. Today, we're going to be very specifically focusing on using GPS data. So who are we? That's me right there. I'm in the cube. I've got a lot to say. And I'm going to pretend that's you guys. Well, at least anyway, this makes it seem a little bit more interesting to me. I'm just going to imagine you guys as being a big, excited crowd. So I'll be a big, excited host and do what I can to answer some questions for you. So today what we're looking at is, as I said, part of a continued, continued ENCODE webinar series on the ENCODE software. Three components to ENCODE software, design life, Glyphworks, and automation. We're going to focus on the middle one today, Glyphworks, because this is software for analyzing measured test data. Now, very specifically, we're not just talking about analyzing any measured test data today. We've had other webinars on working with strain gauge data or vibration analysis with accelerometers and so on. Today, we're going to be very specific and look at one particular niche topic inside test data analysis with Glyphworks, and that is working with GPS data. So what is GPS? Well, who doesn't know the answer to this question, what is GPS? GPS is the stuff that tells you where your hotel is, or the thing that finds nice restaurants when you're out in business. So once upon a time, say 10, even 15 years ago, the question of what is GPS was a novel and interesting rocket science-based question. What is GPS? These days, GPS is accessible to just about everybody through their phones or through their computers or whatever device they have in their car or on their person to help understand where are we. So, you know, GPS itself is not exactly rocket science anymore, but we're engineers, and the goal here is to think about how we can make things a little more complicated than that. So we're going to focus not just on GPS, but engineering uses of GPS data. And those fall into a couple of headings. Things we're going to look at today in this, in this discussion and working with GPS data is, first off, how do we display GPS data? This plot on the on the right side here shows a route that we took. So I measured some data one day, and this shows me where I went, along with other things like this that shows what else was going on at the same time. You're used to collecting channel data like strain and load and temperature, maybe pressure, and so on. We're just going to move past that, extend that a bit, to look at what happens if we collect GPS data as well. Number one, how do we display it? Number two, how can we use that information to do time series editing? So what if I only want to keep the data that was in a certain region here because I knew that was a specific area of interest because there were severe railroad crossings there, for example? How can we do editing of time series data based on this GPS capability? Furthermore, we're going to look at analyzing GPS data, and we can answer questions like, what was the road profile like? Or for that matter, how was the vehicle being used? Or what was the operator doing at the time? All of these questions can be analyzed or can be answered now using new GPS analysis that's available inside ENCODE. I have a couple more slides here to set up these concepts of what can we do with GPS. I'm going to spend the bulk of the time today, though, actually using Glyphworks Live because it's always a lot more interesting to move out of PowerPoint and into the what we call the live or the real world. So how do we visualize GPS data in Glyphworks? Well, two pictures here. It's pretty easy these days. How does anyone visualize GPS data? They look at their phone or they look at the computer. But like I said, we're engineers and we connect we collect other data besides GPS, strain and temperature and so on. So we can use all that information together. First and foremost, the GPS data in the time series that you've measured is available for plotting with the glyph called GPS display inside Glyphworks. And we can see in the upper right here, this is a route that was taken with a map in the background. And on the lower right here is a route, different route, but it's got a satellite image in the background. Both of these are available inside the GPS display glyph, which I'll show you live in just a few minutes. Some interesting things we can do to help understand data when we're plotting inside the GPS display is, first off, the route can be color-coded based on any channel data. For example, this route here is colored based on speed. 
where we have green and blue representing low speeds and orange going into yellow, going into red, showing high speeds. We can color this route based on any channel data, the kind of data you may be used to collecting, like strain. Or, for example, we could even use that strain gauge data with some of our fatigue tools in GlyphWorks to look at damage accumulation and plot out where did damage accumulate along this route. And in doing so, we can learn a lot about not just the test article, but also the operator. Why were they behaving the way they did? Why did the vehicle respond that way? Why was it driven where it was? All these can be, these questions can be answered using the GPS display. In the lower right corner, I'm showing not a continuous colored route, or not a, not a, a varying colored route, but just showing certain highlights. I've got a, a glyph here called the time series calculator, which is acting as a trigger to say, show me when some conditions are true on different routes of the track and also in different sections of time. We'll look at that in just a minute as well. So a lot of GPS display visualization capabilities available inside GlyphWorks. Furthermore, we can do this time series editing based on GPS regions. In this case, I've chosen to highlight this particular region right here, and I've told this Glyph, show me when we're in this region. What time periods is my vehicle inside this polygon? I've defined this polygon by a series of clicks that creates this yellow highlighted region. And then the time series data is the same as the input file, except some sections are highlighted. And this illustrates the time periods in which I was inside that GPS region. And this graphical editor glyph I've got here is actually been set up to keep or extract only the highlighted time series data, which means then my time series is much shorter, and it corresponds only to this part of the proving ground. This can be very nice if I have a long data series, but I need to, based on the GPS region, I need to extract just chunks of time when the vehicle is in that region. I'll show you this live in just a few minutes inside GlyphWorks as well. All right, well, GPS display has been inside ENCODE software for some years now. What's new in ENCODE 10 which is available at the end of March 2014, is a new glyph called GPS Processing. And what that does is it says, let's apply some physics models or even just some basic mathematical algorithms to learn more about GPS, not just plotting it, but learn more things. For example, we can use GPS data to understand things like, what's the road like? So from our GPS data, we can calculate things like, what was the distance traveled over this road? What was the speed? What was the average speed of the whole trip? Well, this is interesting. If we have GPS latitude, longitude, and altitude, then we can calculate road grade. That can be very, very useful because there's sometimes, in absence of road grade, there's some funny things that cars do, and we may scratch our heads and wonder, why is the vehicle behaving the way it is right here? Now, to look at road grade, then suddenly we understand why, on a steep hill, it makes sense that we'd have a low speed and a high engine load condition that would not make sense if the road were flat. So to understand more about road profile and trip distances and so on can be very useful in understanding exactly how the vehicle is being used. Furthermore, we can extend this into looking at vehicle and driver characteristics. We can apply some physics models here. You can imagine if we have GPS that says over time our position is changing in some way, just basic math will tell you that changes of position over time can give us speed, and changes of speed over time can give us acceleration. That means then this GPS processing glyph can use a basic physics model to come up with longitudinal acceleration and lateral acceleration, and then further work past that to look at if we know vehicle mass and, and drag coefficients and so on, then we can calculate what's the rolling resistance and how much, what's the power consumed by aerodynamic drag, for example, and what's the braking performance, and so on. There are a number of unique vehicle characteristics that we can calculate with this new GPS processing glyph, all of which will give us a great handle, then, on how these vehicles are actually used. This, of course, is the uh, a really large question for hybrid powertrains these days. Do drivers of gas vehicles behave differently when they're in electric vehicles? What are the requirements of an engine, of an electric motor, for example, compared to a gas engine? Are speeds different? Are the acceleration rates different? Or what's the average power consumption over time versus 
versus the peak power consumption. That has to do with battery sizing. So we'll look at this in just a minute, look at a number of different GPS use cases. As a matter of fact, I'm going to just jump out of PowerPoint now. It's always a good thing to leave PowerPoint behind because we've seen a lot of PowerPoint in our lives. It's always good to go off and, and go live. So I'm going to go over here and bring up Glyphworks now. And what we have here, this is the ENCODE interface. ENCODE uh, Glyphworks, as we see it here, is for analyzing measured test data. This could be doing fatigue calculations or trying to understand vibration analysis or, in our case, working with GPS data today. The basic idea is that these functions here, these boxes or blocks, we call them glyphs, which is short for hieroglyphics, uh, the re Egyptian concept of representing a larger concept with, with a picture, a, a pictogram of some sort. So these glyphs or engineering analysis functions will be mixed together with this time series data we have here. So this is measured time series data. The file I'm going to work with first today is a race car data set. It's got 12 channels of data, uh, vehicle speed, engine speed, acceleration, acceleration, throttle position, and also you see at the very end latitude and longitude. So I'm going to drag and drop this data into the workspace. So now we've got time series data and we've got some glyphs we can use to process this. The glyph I'm going to use first is a GPS display glyph, so we can just get a feel for where were we when this data was collected. Connect these two together like this. Make the display bigger so we can see it. And let's go ahead and run this, and we'll get an idea of where were we when this data was collected. Now, someone was very, very fortunate to have collected this data because it's on a racetrack, and that just seems like a, lot, or a really fun time. Uh, this is our route right here shown in red. This is where we were. This is a map, so we can zoom in and zoom out. So we can see here, this is actually, as I scroll around on the screen, as I change this map, Glyphworks is actually communicating with a open street map web server somewhere out there in a web farm somewhere, and that returns background images for us. So functionally, this is doing the exact same thing as your smartphone does. It says you're here, and behind you is all this other stuff. So that's our map. If I dig into the properties of this glyph, let's take a look here. We have a number of different options for what the background is. Uh, the plain option would be the, the grid that just says, don't even try to paint any background on the back here because maybe I don't have web access right now or I'm in some place that just doesn't have any mapped background available. Uh, internet map is what I'm looking at right now. And then this option for satellite, I'm going to turn that on. And um, you'll see here then that the display will actually turn into a, uh, an Earth satellite view that shows, yes, indeed, I'm not just driving off the road, I'm driving on a racetrack. So really, these two options of, of uh, internet map or satellite are very nice depending whether you're driving on roads that have been mapped or you'd use satellite if you're in an area where public roads are, are not available, for example, plowing in a farmer's field or driving on a racetrack and so on. While I'm in here, I'm going to go under data lines here. There's a label that says here's where we ended the loop and here's where we started the loop. I'm going to turn those off just so we can see better what's going on. Turn off the annotation. Okay, and then also, while I'm in here, there's another option that I pointed out earlier in slides, and that is that our route can be colored based on channel data. So we have time series channels of speed and engine speed and lateral longitudinal acceleration and power output and, and so on and so forth. All these different channels were collected synchronously with the GPS data. So I'm actually going to color my route here based on vehicle speed. And you'll see then that rather than having a red route all the time, now I've got a route whose color is graduated from the lowest speed, about 39 miles per hour, up to the maximum speed, about 110. It can do this because, of course, we have GPS and other channel data recorded synchronously. There are a number of really nice hardware pieces out there that can collect data that you're used to, strains, accelerations, and such, and also collect GPS data at the same time. I put another display on here. And I want to I want to make a, a point about the beauty of synchronized GPS and channel data, and that is that this time basis of my channel data 
is linked to the GPS data that recorded at the same time. So in this display here, if I turn on cursor tracking up in the toolbar here, as I move my mouse right and left, you can see the crosshair moves and it follows the display at the bottom. It follows the speed versus time trace. Also, at the same time, the cursor appears up in the GPS display. These two displays are then linked to show that what I know about time data can also help me understand where on the, on the test track I was. So for example, I can see that the highest speed I've ever attained was on this back straight heading south, setting up for a hard left, uh, excuse me, hard right hand turn. So any channel data that I have can be linked in to this GPS data thanks to the time sync that they share. Speaking of time sync, I can take this even further. I have a video here that I recorded at the same time. Put this in here, resize this a bit so we can see it better. Okay, and now what we have is this is in-car video, and as it plays back, it synchronizes and shows me the trace, where am I in the track, and also this cursor down in the time domain moves as well. So if you're a user of HBM's EDAC data acquisition unit, you'll know that it's exceedingly easy to collect GPS along with all this other strain and acceleration data. And further, now you can plug in a, a camera, a video camera, into your EDAC as well and collect video at the same time, all of which share the same time sync, which allows us to do this kind of visualization of channel data, of video, and also of GPS route altogether. This can be extremely useful for trying to understand, for example, if this were a strain history here, trying to understand if some strange structural response happens or if there's a large spike of strain or acceleration or what other channel I'm looking at, we can see not just what's the magnitude of that transient event, but also where in the map did that happen. And furthermore, if we have video, what was the operator doing at the same time? And we can use this to gain understanding into product usage and understand the validity of the data that we've collected. So, so far what I've shown here is how we can visualize GPS data and tie it in with other channel data. What I'm gonna do now is switch this up a little bit and see how we can do what we call region-based editing with GPS data. So let's assume that this is a route of a proving ground, or maybe it's several hours worth of, of open road data, and we need to extract little bits of it and analyze just chunks of it. For example, what if this straight section here was the resonance road on our proving ground, and I only wanted to analyze the resonance road data? What I can do here is that I can highlight I'm holding down the control key and every time I click I get a new vertex on a polygon. So I've highlighted this region here, essentially just making marks on a map and I've highlighted this yellow region now and this says then that if I ever pass into this region the GPS display glyph will raise a flag. It'll act like a trigger and say, hey, hey, you're in this region right now, did you know this? The cool thing about this then is that I can use this for editing. I'm going to move, move a couple glyphs around here. Bear with me. I'm actually going to use a glyph called the Graphical Editor, which some of you may know is a tool for taking time series data and, and graphically changing it some way, cleaning erroneous transducer data or extracting sections of time. In our case, we want to extract when we were in this resonance road section. So I'll plug the original time series data in here. And then what comes out of the GPS is what we call a feature list or a list of highlights. And that we're going to plug in like this. I'm going to open up the properties of the graphical editor glyph. And in it, one of the questions will be, if the GPS region says, hey, something interesting happened here, what is this graphical editor going to do? We have some options. We can delete the highlighted time section. I actually want to do the opposite. I want to keep it. This is a property we call extract. So I'll set this to extract and say OK. And then when I run this process, we have a highlight now in the time series data. This is, this highlight here is when we were in this region. As a matter of fact, I can see that 
by using cursor track, and you can see then that I come into this region in this highlight here. So this is the one time I pass through this resonance road. I've got the graphical editor set up to extract that chunk of time, which means then my XY display down here is actually quite a short time series. It's only 24 to 34. It's about 10 seconds. So there are 10 seconds of data there of me passing through the resonance road. And that now is available for any type of analysis downstream coming out of this, coming out of this graphical editor. So if I have fatigue calculations, vibration, whatever it is I need to do next, now I have a chunk of, of real estate, you can say, that I found data in. This is purely resonance road. And in some cases, we would even take all of these glyphs here, highlight them, and I'm going to duplicate them, make a copy of them, essentially. Zoom out so I can see a little bit better what's going on here. I can put these down here, plug more data in, like this, select a new region, Let's just get this connected here so we can run it and see what it looks like. And then in the second graphical editor glyph, this time I'm going to select a different region. Maybe it's this region in here. And maybe this is the pothole area. All right, so we've got the resonance road and the pothole and so on. So I can run a number of these graphical editors, each focusing on a different section or region of the proving ground. And this way then I have essentially a very large pile of input time series data from all sorts of different proving ground use cases or different proving ground events. But I'm using the GPS display cliff to break them out into separate events such that we can analyze them in different ways. So this region-based editing can be very useful for finding when did something happen and extracting just that chunk of time. Now the third use case I want to get into now looking at GPS data is actually something new in GlyphWorks. Everything I've shown you up until this just now has been part of GlyphWorks for, for quite some time. What's new for ENCODE 10, though, is a new glyph here called GPS processing. And this is going to answer the questions I asked earlier about things like what was the total trip distance or how much aerodynamic drag was there or what was the average power consumption and so on and so forth. So the way this works is I've got some more time series data to process here. This is much more traditional GPS data. This is channels of latitude, longitude, altitude, speed, and heading. So no additional transducer data whatsoever. The race car example I just showed previously had a number of other very uh, engineering-focused transducers, let's call them, for measuring engine power and, and uh, some of these other parameters, engine speed and so on. This is literally using nothing more magic than a smartphone these days. Every smartphone can, through some GPS app, can not just show you where you are, but also record, say at one hertz, this type of data, latitude, longitude, altitude, speed, and heading. And this is what we see here. That's my input. I'm going to run this process and we'll take a look and see what's going on here. So first off, we'll see where I was. You can see this was driving through the countryside here. And the GPS processing glyph, we'll take a look inside it in just a minute, but let's take a look at some answers first. We have some basic answers here in this metadata display here that says things like, for this data file, the average speed that I was driving was 42 miles per hour. The distance was 29 miles or kilometers, maximum speed, maximum lateral acceleration. And then duration and idle time. So all of these have been calculated. It's, it's uh, just using the basic math and physics formulas and the input GPS data. You can imagine it's not hard to take latitude and longitude versus time and from that calculate piece by piece how, how far did we travel and then add up that over time and we can come up with this total distance that was traveled and then divide that by the duration of the trip and we can come up with average speed. So some pretty basic math going on here. Slightly more complicated math, we can see some time series channel results here. Let's take a close look at this. So here we have latitude, longitude. These are the five channels we started with. So again, this is very low effort to get to this point. This is me just downloading data off of my smartphone. What's new here in this GPS processing glyph is some other channels that I have calculated. Things like, well, there's a calculated speed here. 
Now, my phone already told me what the speed was, so really calculating speed from changes in latitude and longitude is something done by the GPS processing glyph, but I don't necessarily need to need to worry about that. That's nothing nothing unique. What is unique is we have some of these other channels here, like this distance. This is total distance traveled, right? So distance instantaneously, and then finally, what's the total distance? This is really nice to look at things happening in a field where we want to know what happened and how long did we do it for and how far did we travel when we did it as opposed to how far is it from point A to point B. You think about a tractor in a field, point A is coming into the field and point B is that same spot leaving the field. And a whole lot of traveling happens between those points. So to use this calculated distance channel can be really, really useful in understanding how far that tractor drives in that field. We also have longitudinal acceleration and lateral acceleration, both derived from changes of, of uh, latitude and longitude. Yaw rate, here's an interesting one. The blue one is road grade. So this is if we have an altitude channel available, then we can do the calculation of per distance, what's the altitude change like, and we can look at the percentage of road grade. This can be extremely useful for you look, if you're looking at data in mountains or trying to understand what's happening when you drive in San Francisco. Why does the test article behave so much differently in San Francisco than it does in, say, Des Moines, Iowa? Well, it may come down to looking at road grade and understanding the influence of road grade on vehicle behavior. We also have some power parameters here, looking at total engine power, uh, also um, braking and tractive effort, inertial resistance, air resistance, and so on. So you may wonder, how is it we can calculate air resistance and, and such just based on basic GPS data? So let's go take a look at that, actually. Turn away from these results, and now let's take a look at this GPS processing glyph's properties. We have in here this form that says, what do we want to calculate from GPS latitude, longitude, and altitude? And I've checked all of these. We've seen all these so far. Some of these are exceedingly simple. You can imagine that calculating distance is not terribly hard. But then we get into some more complicated things like looking at, say, longitudinal acceleration or maybe even braking power or air resistance. That comes from a basic physics model. It requires us to provide channel information about each channel. What's the latitude channel, longitude, also speed and altitude. If we don't have a speed channel, GlyphWorks GPS processing glyph will calculate it for us. If we don't have altitude, we obviously cannot understand gradient then. We can't understand the road pitch, but we can calculate some of this other stuff instead. Down towards the bottom here are vehicle constants, mass, frontal area, and so on. Effectively, this is just going back to your days if you took a, a class in, in physics or someone drew a free body diagram of a car at some point. You may have thought a bit about what are the different forces acting on a vehicle as it moves down the road. Well, obviously, there's if it's accelerating, it's got to overcome its own inertia. If it's going up a hill, it's got to overcome mg times sine of theta, so on and so forth. These questions here are asking what parameters do we need to use to, to put that math into effect. So the nice thing here, then, is that I can go off and take a huge amount of time series data, put them in this input glyph, and let it run now, and we'll have these same answers generated for every one of the of the routes. So you can see here the routes will be changing. These are various routes. You can imagine if your goal was to better understand what the typically severe customer does, you better figure out what a lot of different customers do, and then try to summarize that information in various ways. These are a number of trips here, and the the GPS processing glyph has given me the ability then to dig in and try to understand things like what are average speeds and average distances and using some of these other power channels and such I can look at what's peak power consumption versus average power consumption and and even to make it simpler let's look at it this way how much time did we spend idling with a, a very low speed for example it's really interesting if you look at at fleets of data you find out very quickly that an amazing amount of time on certain types of vehicles is spent doing absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing but the engine running. And this is critically important to understand if you're designing a gearbox, or if you're designing an engine, 
or if you're designing a radiator, because to assume that a vehicle is always moving at some speed is missing out on amazing, unfortunate trends in, in fleet vehicles. For example, in military vehicles, up to half the time is spent with the vehicle not even moving. The engine is on, but the vehicle is not moving. Now, you can imagine if you're trying to build a gearbox with that duty cycle in mind, you can save a lot of weight by making a gearbox that only has to see over a full life. It's only moving half of its time as opposed to the entire time. So understanding what the average customer does or typically severe customer does can be aided by looking at this GPS data. A couple other points to make here about this GPS processing glyph. Let's go back and look in the properties. It's got a couple of properties here under conditioning. And what this means is, how do we take a physics-based model or math algorithm and apply it to real-world GPS data? There are a couple problems. One is that sometimes our GPS data cuts out on us. And it's maybe because we've gone, say, under a bridge or in a tunnel or something like that. Or it may just be that our, our reception is spotty. The problem is then that the GPS data can take on some weird characteristics. So for example, this speed threshold here is asking that at what point should the should these physics-based motion calculations stop? In other words, if we're looking at all of these calculations based on change of position in the world, if our position stops changing, speed goes to zero, what should we do? And we can put together a, put in a threshold here that says when speed drops below this level, stop these calculations and just use previous values use the last known value that we know of, rather than calculating new garbage values. The property above that is called the median filter. And if you remember statistics, the median is if you have a data set, say a, a, a bunch of numbers, you rank them from lowest to highest value, and then you pick the one in the middle. And you may say, OK, that's fine. I think I learned that in seventh grade. But what's that got to do with engineering now? The answer is that all of our signals coming out of this GPS processing glyph have been passed through a median filter, which is a fantastic way of getting rid of outliers. It's a great way of having, say, spiky data become smooth data, which means then smooth GPS data, when applied to a physics model, can give us useful GPS predictions, useful properties like the power we've talked about today and the average speeds and, and so on. If you want to know more about how this glyph actually operates, go down to the lower left corner here in GlyphWorks under Manuals. And two things. Uh, the GlyphWorks Work Example Set has 25 chapters in it, three of which have to do with how does this GPS stuff actually work. So this, these are tutorials that I've essentially worked through today. How do we visualize? How do we edit based on GPS and so on? The Glyph Reference Guide here is the encyclopedia of all glyphs. And what it allows me to do is to look in here and see, for example, in this glyph called GPS processing, this will step me through all the inputs and outputs. And it's actually got a pretty useful section in here on how does the math work. So what is this GPS processing glyph actually going to do? What is the math that goes into it? It's not magic. It's not a random number generator. It's just based on, on basic concepts of physics and rates of change of things and so on. And that's ex explained in this manual. So I encourage you to dig into that if you have access to the ENCODE software. Now I've just shown a number of things all based around GPS. And I hope what we've done here today is illustrate how you can use your, your GPS data for more than just